Hi, and welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. And tonight's YouTube Live, my name is Lisa Curcio. I'm so glad that you've joined me. If this is your first time visiting my YouTube channel, I am thrilled that you're here. This is a YouTube Live event, so you may be watching the replay. And I just want to let you know that I'm excited to share with you tonight's Fun Fold card. And it's called a Double Dutch Fold. If you're here looking for the pictures and the cutting dimensions when this video is over, you're going to find them below the title in the YouTube description. Now, a lot of people ask me, well, how do I find that? Well, underneath the title of the video, you're going to see the words show more. And if you click that and scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see a link there that will navigate you over to the pictures and the cutting dimensions. Give me a few minutes when the live is over for those of you that are joining me live for that information to be there. But I'm glad that you're here. Thanks for joining me. Today's card is beautiful, bright, bold colors. And I think you're going to love the suite of products that I've chosen for tonight's card. For those of you that are joining live, just a couple housekeeping items. Um, if you want to chat, I would love for you to do so. Make sure that you log into your YouTube channel, which is your Gmail address. And Megan is my assistant. I want to point her out to you because if you've logged in, You'll see the chat off to the side if you are here on a desktop version. Her name is in blue, and Megan is here to interact with you because I'm going to be busy stamping, which is what you came here to watch. And it's difficult for me to comment, but I do come back and I read every single comment and we do reply to them. So I think we're ready. What do you say we get started? I'm going to turn the camera down to the stamp table and I'll get you all zoomed in. Here we go. All right, I just wanna make sure that you're fairly straight. We'll get you in a little bit closer. The very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna do some scoring. Now I brought in my paper trimmer here. And I'm gonna, I don't wanna get you in too close because I want you to be able to actually see the whole trimmer. I love, love, love this trimmer because it includes both a cutting and a scoring blade. So the light one is for scoring, the dark one is for cutting. The other thing I love about it, of course, we've got non-skid feet. And this arm here on the side opens up and it extends, extends well past 17 inches. So you can do a lot of cutting on this little trimmer. And you're going to see by the width that it's very portable. So you can definitely take it with you when you go to stamping events. Now, I've already cut my cardstock. And I'm like I said, I'm going to have those dimensions for you down below. But I want to walk you through the scoring. This piece measures nine inches by four and three sixteenths. Now I know some of you are probably gonna be going, eek, where is three sixteenths? So I'm going to show you, because I know if you're gonna duplicate this at home, you may be confused on where that's going to be. I'm gonna zoom you in because I want you to actually be able to see those dimensions. I'm gonna move that trimmer down. Three sixteenths is actually just shy of four and a quarter. So you're gonna see the four and a half is here. Here's the four and a quarter. So it's the small mark right before it. And that is where I've cut my cardstock. Okay, so that's already done. So my cutting blade is up here at the top. I'm gonna to move that out of the way and I'm gonna bring in the scoring blade. Now that I've identified that for you, then what we're gonna do now is we are going to create the first score line. And this is gonna be at five and a half inches. So I'm gonna navigate all the way over here. I know you've got a little bit of a glare from the studio light, sorry about that. And I'm gonna line that up to five and a half inches, making sure my cutting blade is out of the way. Here's my scoring blade, and then we'll just score. All right, so now we've got the base of our card. Now I'm gonna set this off to the side, and I've got another strip of cardstock here. This measures two by eight and a half. Now the beauty of this is when you cut this down to the size that you need, you're gonna end up with this perfect strips. So you're really not even gonna to have to cut this, to be honest with you. It's already gonna come out at two by eight and a half. Now this we're gonna score, and I prefer to score and then flip my paper around because I find that's a lot easier for me. So the scoring line is gonna be at two and one eighth. So I'm gonna navigate you over to there. So again, this is the half, this is the quarter, and this is gonna be the eighth, which is gonna be the long line right before the quarter. I'm going to do my best to line that up, and then I'm going to score. And the easiest way is just to flip this around and now do the exact same measurement on this side. So I'm going to go up to two and an eighth, and I'm going to score. That is all there is to this card. Now I'm going to set the trimmer off to the side. Let me get that out of the way. I'm going to zoom you out just a little bit so you have a little bit better work area to see. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put these pieces together. So I've got that card base here that's been scored. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it down and I'm going to use my bone folder. 
Whenever you're creating 3D projects and even fun folds or fancy folds as they're called, I do recommend you reinforce those score lines because it's gonna help hold your card together. Remember a fun fold or a fancy fold means that there are moving parts and the card isn't actually um, the normal layout, which means a fold on the side or a fold on the top. It's gonna have other pieces to it. This is the strip that we did. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna fold this up. And again, if you didn't do anything straight, this is a great time to kind of reinforce those straight edges here. So I always look to make sure that those are gonna be well aligned. And I'll use my bone folder on this edge too. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate this panel and I'm gonna decorate these panels. So let's start with this larger top piece. I've pulled out a piece of designer series paper. Oh my gosh, I am loving, loving, loving this paper. Now I'm gonna show you where this came from in just a second. But like most of the Stampin' Up! designer series papers, they are double-sided. Now the thing I absolutely love about this is you're gonna see that this is very simple, but the other side is a really simple green, which means this is gonna be great to use on all type of cards, including masculine cards. I'm gonna use my silicone craft sheet to add adhesive to the back of this layer. I like to work close to the edge, and I don't know about you, but I oftentimes get a little aggressive and then the adhesive falls on my work surface and it's sticky and then I'm fighting it the whole time I'm crafting. So the one I do now is I'm gonna attach this near the top. I'm looking to leave a small border around the top and the sides, and then when I'm happy with the placement, we'll just press that in place. So now we've got this. Okay, I'm gonna move this off to the side and I'm gonna come back to that strip. Remember these two panels that are here? And we're gonna decorate these with more designer series paper. Now I've cut two additional strips here for you that look like this. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna attach those, but I know someone is going to ask me, where did you get those? So I wanna show you where I got them because I think that's over, overlooked quite often in this paper. Isn't this gorgeous? Now these poppies, are at the bottom and the top of the paper. The center area here is where I got this. So all I did was a little bit of creative cutting. So I just cut a little bit here and a little bit here to get the pattern that I wanted. The great thing about this is there's no waste because you got a lot more on this side. And like I said, it's double-sided with that other really versatile design. Beautiful. This is all part of the same suite of products that I'm gonna be using from the Painted Poppies Bundle. Look at this all over the front of the brand new mini catalog that debuted in January. I will tell you the last time I checked, this is the number one selling product in this mini catalog. So let me just flip this open. And I wanna show you this Peaceful Poppies Suite. Now I know it's a lot of poppies and a lot of words and you're probably thinking, oh wow, there's a lot going on here, but there is. But the great thing about this entire suite is these products all work together. So there's that designer series paper I just shared with you. It's called Peaceful Poppies Designer Paper. You're gonna see that there's absolutely gorgeous, stunning watercolor images here. And then there's coordinating stamp sets and dies. So if you want everything, which most people do, you can buy the entire suite. Or of course, you can buy just one bundle at a time. And of course, there's beautiful accessories. So we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes, but I cut that paper strategically so that I'm able now to go ahead and um, um, add this to those panels that I want. Sorry about that, didn't mean to make you dizzy. I'm gonna add adhesive to the back side. I'm gonna work generously near those edges because I know that this is going to be near the bottom of my card. I like to open it up to make sure that I get all the way to the edge. And I like to do things um, horizontally. Here's my crease. I don't do too many things straight, so I find this is the easiest for me. I am looking to make sure this edge of my designer paper is as close to the edge of this cardstock as possible. It's easier to work from the outside in than from the inside out. It's a little bit more forgiving visually too. And then just to make sure that my pattern is going to line up, I'm gonna make sure that this is on the other side. So we're gonna add adhesive here. I'm gonna work very close to the edges. I have four additional cards to share with you using this suite of products. So make sure you stick with me to the end of the video because I can't wait to share those with you. Again, I'm gonna work very close to the edge, lining that up the best that I can and we'll press that in place. Okay, so now we have our panels here. The next thing we're gonna do is we are actually going to attach these two pieces to make the fold that we want to create for this fun fold. This is gonna create a door on the bottom. And I'm gonna give you a really important tip. These two pieces should be the same color 
cardstock so that it's not obtrusive because this panel is going to go here when we're all finished. There's a couple ways you can choose to do this. You can add adhesive within the score lines here, or you can add adhesive here. Now, here's my problem. I have a tendency to go too high with my adhesive, which means it would extend past here, and then you've got that sticky area you're fighting. So I prefer to add my adhesive here. So seeing my score lines are here, I'm going to work along that score line perimeter, but not too close to it. And I'll show you why in just a minute. And then I'm going to work around the edges here. And I prefer dashes because sometimes if I lay a long strip of adhesive down, I tend to be really, really crooked and I waste a bunch. All right. So I want to make sure my pattern is going in the right way. Yes, it is. And then here is that card base. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two together. Now, the easiest way to do this is to make sure your fingers are all the way here at the very bottom and line up the card base. Now, you know, adhesive, if you're using good stuff, is not really forgiving. So you want to make sure that these areas here where the creases are, are not going to be too far to the left or to the right because they need to close. And then we'll tack that in place. And then you can see that this should close, which it does. Now, let's go ahead and let's finish decorating this card. I've got some cardstock here and I've got some dies. And I want to show you this because this is absolutely brilliant. I love this entire suite of products specifically for this reason. So we've got a solid die here that I used with grapefruit cardstock. And then I've got a detailed die that I used with Calypso Coral. Now I did dye them before you joined me, which left me with this. You're going to see that they overlap with each other. So let me just move these out of the way. I've got lots of pieces here, so bear with me. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach these two pieces together. And it's a little bit like a puzzle. You'll just have to kind of manipulate this to get it where it goes. I'm going to use a glue dot tonight just for the sake of the live video. But I am going to recommend that you use very small dots of uh, liquid glue. And the reason I recommend liquid glue is because not all of this flower is going to be completely tacked down to the card base when we're finished. And you'll see what I mean when we're done. You're going to want to make sure the outside circumference is not going to lift as this card is coming in and out of the envelope. But like I said, we're going to speed things up a little bit. So I've got my glue dot here, and I'm going to add a couple glue dots to the back side where it's not going to show. And I'm just pressing them in that solid area here, and that'll lift off the glue dot here on the back panel. And then I'm looking to align those pieces just to kind of create that little puzzle image. And so we've got these beautiful outlined flowers now. There's also a die, or several dies actually, in this bundle that actually makes the center for the flower. And I die cut this one, I wanna show it to you in case you wanna duplicate it, for the center on this larger flower. And here it is already die cut. I'm gonna use another glue dot, and of course you'll wanna use liquid glue and take your time. And I'm gonna peel that off, and then we're gonna attach that here in the center. All right, so now we've got one of our poppies already finished. Let's set this one aside, and I'm going to move on to another one. I've got a smaller poppy here, and this is using Rich Razzleberry for the solid base. Same concept as a larger one, Blackberry Bliss for the outlined. And again, I've already die cut those before you joined me, and those are here. And just like we did before, we're going to put that little puzzle together. So again, I'm going to use glue dots. I'm just going to use one, and I'm going to attach that here. I'm just looking to align it the best that I can. All right, this has a center as well. And this die is smaller. And I wanna show that to you, isn't this neat? There are several different center dies and they all have beautiful detail in them. I'm telling you what, you're gonna have a ball with this. So again, I'm gonna use a glue dot tonight just cause we're here live and we don't wanna watch the glue dry. I'm gonna be very careful lifting that off cause I'm using a glue dot versus glue. Gonna hide what I think is gonna show and I'm gonna put that right here in the center of that poppy. Do you see what I've done here? So we've got some really beautiful definition. So now we have our two flowers and I'm gonna set those aside. The next thing I did is I took a piece of colored vellum. Now you might be looking at this and wondering where I got it. And it comes from the Perennial Essence Vellum Package. You're gonna find this paper in the Stampin' Up! Annual Catalog, which is here. Now, if you don't already have a demonstrator and you are interested in receiving complimentary copies of these catalogs, I would be happy to send them to you. Head over to lisasstampstudio.com and click on Contact Me, and I'll be sure to include that sale brochure that's going on right now. I don't know about you, but I love free stuff. 
And that's what that sale brochure is all about. Oftentimes with colored vellum, you'll notice a tone difference. Do you see how it's lighter on one side and darker on the other? Well, that's another great bonus when you're using dyes because you're able to vary the colors, especially with leaves, because no two leaves are both light or both dark. So you can flip these around and create different directions. So I've got them die cut, which I did right before you joined me. Here they are. And again, you're going to see the color difference. So we're going to add those to the front of the card as well. I'm going to set those off to the side. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp the inside for this card. Now, this time I'm going to protect my work surface because I know I'm going to be doing a little bit of stamping off the edge here. I've got one of the small grid papers. Love these because there's grid lines. Remember I told you I don't do too many things straight. So these help me to keep things as straight as possible. I have pulled out the words, wishing you every happiness this special day will bring. And this comes from the entire suite of products. And this comes from the Peaceful Moments stamp set. I will tell you, it's one of my most beloved greeting stamp sets right now. There is literally something in here for everything. Now, again, this is in that mini catalog, and it can be purchased as a bundle with those dies I just showed you to create these flowers and the leaves. Okay, so that's one bundle. But there's also another bundle that's part of this suite, and I'll show you that in a second. So let's go ahead and use the Memento Black ink pad. And of course, if you prefer a colored ink pad, you certainly can do that. I'm going to go ahead and ink that up. And then I'm going to pray. I'm going to get this kind of straight because my head's far away because of the camera. And I'm going to press. There we go. That's decent. I've got my stamp and scrub or your stamp and chamois, whichever you favor, right off camera. And then what I've done is I've mounted the smaller poppy stamp image. Now, this is the other stamp set or bundle, however you purchase it, that I wanted to show you that's part of that entire suite. So this is called Painted Poppies, and I have to tell you, I am loving, loving, loving this. Incredibly versatile. This little blob right here, we're going to use that. That is great for background color. It's also intended to fill these images, and it's intended to look watercolored and not filled perfectly. You can also color these in. So if you favor watercoloring mediums or Stampin' Blends alcohol markers or colored pencils, you're going to have a lot of fun with this because there's a lot of versatility here. There are dies that go with this as well. So you can see they're going to die cut your flowers. There's some excellent accent pieces in here too. So this is painted poppies, part of that suite. I'm going to ink up that small poppy image. And I'm going to stamp that right here just to give us a little bit of interest to the front of that card. I like to stamp off my excess ink on my scratch paper. That reduces my trips of rinsing out my stamp and scrub or my stamp and chamois. Keeps me at my stamp table a lot longer so I don't have to go and clean that up. Now I'm going to add some color to this and I'm going to bring in that Calypso coral that I used for the cardstock on that beautiful 3D flower. This is the thing I love about Stampin' Up! products is the color coordination. I'm going to go ahead and open that up and there's that blob we talked about. Remember this? Now I want you to know it's not going to fill it perfectly because it's not intended to. Now, I know that this ink is rather dark, so I'm going to ink this up, and I'm going to turn this because I want to make sure that that black ink is dry. I don't pick that up in my Calypso Coral. I'm going to ink this up, and I'm going to stamp off a layer of ink here on my scratch paper because I want this to be lighter, and then I'm going to fill my poppy. So there we go. We've got just a little bit of watercolored there uh, for presentation on this flower, which coordinates beautifully with that designer series paper. And then again, that tip I shared with you, just to stamp off all that ink, It'll reduce those trips to cleaning out that scrub or chamois that you're using. All right, I'm going to move that off to the side for right now. And let's go ahead and flip this piece over and add some adhesive to it so we can put this on the inside of our card. And then we're going to assemble the front of the card. And I want to give you some tips about where you're placing these elements because that's going to be really important for this fun fold. All right, so here is the card again. And those are those Dutch doors we talked about. This is going to go in on the inside, and again, I'm looking to leave that small border of color all the way around, and I'm not confident that that's dry, so I'm going to turn this upside down and rub this way. I don't know how many times I've gone like this, and I've had ink here, and I've transferred it all over my card. Here is why you want these two pieces to be the same colored cardstock, because literally, it's invisible if you do. So there we go. We've got our fold. Now, let's decorate the front of this. Remember we talked about these pieces? 
let's go ahead and start with the largest one first. And I'm going to flip that over. And now I'm going to add some dimension to this. So I'm going to use my pre-cut pieces of foam tape, which are called dimensionals. And I'm going to add them close to the center. I don't want to impede these areas for a reason. But before I go too crazy sticking this down, I want to show you something. I want to make sure that this is going to fall in an area that's going to help secure and weight down the front of this card. So that means that some of these dimensionals can't be showing, right? We've got to make sure that they're not going to hang over into the inside of the card. So let me take a quick look here. Look, this one's got to go. I got a little bit excited. So let's go ahead and use my take your pick tool with that paper piercing tool attachment. And we'll remove that paper backing. And then once again, I'm going to kind of position this where I know it's going to fall. Let's see, which way do we want this to go? I think I'm going to want this to go this way. And then before I get too excited, I'm going to check again. Okay, good. You can't see any. That's good. So what's going to happen now is it's going to weight this down and create a little bit of a closure here. So remember the smaller poppy that we created? Well, we're going to do the same thing. So now I'm going to borrow that dimensional that I had just used, and we'll use that tool again. I can't live without this thing. I love it. Putty tip helps you pick up sequins, small pieces of paper, and I love this to remove and pick up things as well. It's called the Take Your Pick tool, and this is going to go underneath here. I just want it to peek out just a little bit. And then the last step for this card, remember I've got four others I'm going to share with you, are those leaves. And remember, too, how I told you that there's slightly tone difference? So let's use that to our advantage. I know that there's some dimensionals behind here. So how far this is going to go is really, well, look, it's going to go pretty far. So let's go ahead and do this. I'm going to cheat. I'm going to use my silicone craft sheet for this. And I'm going to add adhesive down here because I know that this part is not going to show. It's going to be tucked behind that die cut flower. So I'm going to tuck this here and I want to make sure this stays within the perimeter of my card base. Otherwise, it's not going to fit inside the envelope. OK, so we've got this one here and then this one I flipped over so it's lighter. But I know this is going to be too long. So let's go ahead and grab my paper snips and let's give this a little bit of a haircut. Um, if you're thrifty like me, you'll probably save this and use this on another card. I'm going to turn that over. Remember, I'm going to use the darker side down this time because I want that varying green color. And I'm going to tuck this now up behind here. And no two cards I create are ever the same. I'm sure you guys are doing the same thing at home, right? You try to make them identical, but they're closely related. And then I like to go back over this and reinforce all my score lines now that my card is assembled. Isn't this pretty? These rich colors are just so striking. Isn't this gorgeous? So this is called a double Dutch fold. Now, I promised you some other cards using the suite of products, and let me share those with you. Let me put that off to the side and let me grab these. These next cards that I'm sharing with you are using this specifically. It's the Painted Poppies Bundle. So it's the Painted Poppies stamp set with the coordinating painted labels dies. So you can buy these as a bundle, which will save you 10%, or you can buy them individually. Okay, so that's what these next cards are all created using. Now, the cards I'm going to share with you are all part of my monthly card making kit. And that card making kit ordering period started today. My customers who want to use the card kit at home will place a $50 qualifying product order before shipping and tax, and they'll receive the pre-cut supplies to make a total of eight cards, two of four different designs. And this is the first one. My instructions are amazing. I have to tell you, I put a lot of effort into them, but even better yet, you're going to get a video so you can stamp right along with me at home. You'll get the pre-cut supplies in the mail from me. I'll walk you through the entire process of making the cards. So two for this one. You'll also get two for this one. Don't you love this little bit smaller card? Look at the focus on those poppies. Isn't that beautiful? I'm going to give you so many tips in the videos for this card kit. It's going to make creating at home super easy. Now, if you want your cards to look exactly like mine, obviously you might want the painted poppies bundle that we used here. Or you can use what you have at home. I make ordering really flexible because a lot of people have flowers that they want to use, but they want the card kit, and that is totally fine. And then here is the last one. I'm going to give you the pre-cut cardstock, the envelopes, and the designer series paper. I even include the scrap cardstock for you to do your die cutting at home. Now, let me turn the camera around and tell you how you can get your card kit.
I only have a four day ordering window window. It's between now and Saturday. I'm looking at my calendar, which is February 15th or while supplies last as long as it lasts till the 15th. I only have a limited number of card kits. And if they sell out before the 15th of February, they're gone. We only have so much supplies. So if you're interested in the card making kit, you will need to place an order over at lisasstampstudio.com. But very important that you must use the exclusive card making kit host code. Otherwise, I'll never know that that order was intended for these free pre-cut supplies, the video, and the PDF tutorial that goes along with it. If your order happens to be $150 or more in product, do not use the host code because I want you to be able to redeem the Stampin' Rewards for yourself. But it is imperative that you contact me and let me know that that order is intended for the card kit supplies. Otherwise, I have no way of knowing. You can contact me at lisasstampstudio.com. Just click on contact me at the top, generates an email so you can let me know. The great thing, too, about my card kits is I include an added bonus. In addition to the pre-cut supplies to make the eight cards of those four designs, the video and the PDF tutorial, my customers also receive a private invitation to a special YouTube live event. Now, this is on a private channel where I do numerous live demonstrations. They get a bundle of free product tutorials where I'm going to teach them different projects. And I enter everyone's name into product prize patrols. It's just my way of saying thank you for their order and for their card kit. I would love to have you join us for this month's card making kit where we're using the Painted Poppies bundle. I am reaching over for that fun fold that we created tonight. Isn't this fun? All part of that amazing suite of products. Now, I want to give you a couple other things um, I wanted to share with you before we go while we're together. When you head over to my website at lisastampstudio.com, sign up for my free weekly e-newsletter. It is a no-thrills newsletter because inside of it is a free tutorial that I do not share on any of my other platforms. It's, like I said, no frills. So just sign up and get yourself an additional project idea with a picture every single week, and those are typically sent on Thursdays. If you scroll down to the bottom of my uh, website, you'll be able to click to stay in the know and sign up to get notifications when I share new project ideas as well. Now, I'm going to be back live with you. I'm looking at my calendar on Wednesday, February 26th at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, I would love to encourage you to do so so that you can receive notifications. Make sure you click that small bell icon that's next to the subscribe button so that you'll get those notifications so that you don't miss us live. I'm looking forward to sharing more new project ideas with you. Remember, too, if you want those catalogs, head over to lisastampstudio.com and contact me. Thank you so much, Megan, for all of your hard work tonight. Thank you, everyone, for joining me for this fun fold card. Have a great night.